we came to a consensus and decided we're not going to stand for this we're going to get him out and it was found he was also laundering money like our leaking private information he leaked my snapchat at the time these, these were girls who were groomed by this guy using his position of power in a group Hello, I am Colonel Shotgun Physics. I am currently Commanding Officer of Ranger Reconnaissance Detachment in ASOC. I have been in Zan's USAR for six, almost seven years now. I started over at Delta. I was given Delta CO as the first thing within this group. It was, back then, only six members, and we grew to 30 within a day. While I had Delta, Within the first few weeks, we went on two raids, and then we kind of stopped after the group shut down for a few months, tried getting everything back on our feet. We were making new tech, getting raid maps out, stuff that was operational so we can go at such a capacity. After this five-month period, I get a message from Aston, and he's like, hey, instead of just Delta, do you want to lead up the entirety of ASOM? I say, sure, why not? At this point, we start blasting ads, and it's like overnight, we have 2,000 members, which was crazy. I get ASOC CG, and over the span of the next three months, we saw ASOC, which was just 75th and Delta at the time, grow exponentially. We had 90 members operational, we had 70 Rangers, and about 15 Delta members. Um, from there, it took us a few months to get on our feet as USAR grew, and I had my guys doing raids before I really started climbing the ranks. I was then given Director of Army Staff before the end of the year, which was different because normally I'm a combative guy, but it was kind of my introduction to how USAR as a whole worked. And from that point on, I would then move to Vice Chief of Staff and then Chief of Staff of the Army under Aston. We had a bit of an altercation and a disagreement which led me getting demoted back down to ASOC Chief of Staff for the one year anniversary, which then I was promptly promoted back up to Commanding General. We then strived forward, made plays against groups as GUSM, AUSM, and BA, which I have done too many raids against to count. In the span of, I'd like to say, a good few weeks, we were doing anywhere from 
20, we'd be averaging 20 raids a week. We'd have a few a day where we would just go and attack their bases, which was War on Water and another island map I'm unfamiliar with the name. It was definitely a different time, this little honeymoon period of USAR, as I like to call it. There wasn't much problems, but we were still growing and didn't know what we fully wanted to be. We didn't know if we wanted to be administrative focus or more combatively focused. And it was really kind of a power struggle between units like military police and even my own ASOC. After Aston got removed, I was promoted to Chief of Staff of the Army for my second time because my time as Chief of Staff of the Army was temporary. I was the liaison between Cybervolts and his incoming staff and the old Red Hearts and operators who were there beforehand. We were then tasked with going to war with a few groups. I personally undertook leading this as I did previously, which people agreed with because of my past as a raid leader for USAR. However, the leader at the time, Cybervolt, wanted me to take more of a backseat and administrative tasking to it and leaving it to a general. That is how USAR got their first loss in a war. And moving forward, I sat down and had a talk with them and said, moving forward, I will be taking control of raids. So we do not have a loss like this because every group, no matter what it is in this genre, it can be special operations, it can be conventional, it could be training in some form is competitive. And we kind of lost that competitive edge when we took a loss. So immediately as a show of morale, I took us all on a raid against GUSM, which was dying at the time, but after our swift victory of GUSM, I was recommended a group, which was an Austrian Armed Forces. We fought them, they had new tech, which inspired us to build some of the stuff we even have now. Some of the tech I have on my own maps, which are used for training even now. But overall, took a swift hit on morale and then had to clean it up because the people who were put in place were not ready at the time for something like this or leading something on this scale where we were hitting three to four maps at a single time trying to manage that all and bouncing from call to call it's it's definitely difficult and some people just weren't ready so moving forward we got ready we got prepared and after that whole debacle after we won we started going at a more downward slope, not in a bad way, but just overall starting to lack content. We lacked a drive, and that's where Cyber and I had our first major disagreement. He introduced his little clandestine unit of a force called Peacekeepers, who went on base and started a civil war, which led with them getting arrested infinitely so they could not cause any problems. This caused discord between Cyber and I, but because he didn't want to lose his most valued staff member, he um, promoted me to chairman after my actions against this and gave the rank of chief of staff of the army to another founder called Initia. Later within the year came the Delta incident where Cyber and I disagreed and that caused discord which gave Zan the group. I was then 
Um, I bounced around from unit to unit. I stayed in MP for some time, got PMG again, helped out Forcecom with some tech, and then went back to what I know, ASA. At this time, ASOC was coming out of a deficit because there was no tech from Cyber. So we were kind of relying on raiding other groups for that tech, but I sat down and I talked with my staff. I'm like, we need something of our own. We need to be able to stop raiding these bases that have these clear unfair advantages that are just made for them to win. Because no matter how hard we win, we don't have a healthy mindset going in because we know how these guys are going to act. They're going to act cocky. It's just going to hurt everyone and now it's going to have fun. That's when I kind of came to the conclusion that I'll be making my own maps and using those because those I can make sure are balanced and fair overall over having to rely on the trust of someone else who I do not know. After a while, I then became Zan's staff at this point in 2020, only reaching the rank of Director of Army Staff. I faded out for a while, took a break from USAR while still checking in, and late 2020 went back to ASOC. And then the following year, we had a unit known as Space Command, which was started up and known as Highly Controversial. It was an idea between three of us. We were kind of joking around base, and we were not sober when we made the idea. But it came out as something different, something unique for USAR to experience. We knew it was going to be temporary. We, everyone knew it was not going to stay around. But it'd be something where we have a freedom of tech. People can explore it as they go in. And we'd be able to pioneer it how we see fit without having these, you know, this quote, realism border, which has hindered units in the past. Base Command then went on to win a series of raids. We had a record of 293 and 1 under my leadership, and then I was promoted to Chief of Staff of the Army when uh, Pro Bullion stepped down. Space Command slowly did crumple until Zan eventually shut it down. And everyone in Space Command remembers it fondly, but we all knew it was going to eventually shut down. So we came to terms with that a while ago. As Chief of Staff of the Army, I organized an event which I have brought to this group called War Games. There was some controversy in a match which I played against 44 SOAR members on a team of only 12 1st Infantry Division which therein caused enough controversy to spread that eventually led with me leaving that position. I then went from SF and helped them out with their program. And then I am now in Rangers and helping build that up. I have been given my own unit, which is the only tier one unit USAR has to this point known as Ranger Recon Detachment. And I'm planning on sticking around in this unit for quite some time. It originally started with six of us. It started with Aston, myself, Kareem, a guy named Mikey, Initius, and another guy who is currently not present. We started on the 17th of January, 2016. We had a few fails, got up a couple hundred members. And then after about five months of a shutdown, we officially 
got USAR up on its feet in a place we thought it was all stable enough. As time progressed, I bounced through units. I was in ASOC and we started doing a lot of combative raids. We were very active in terms of raids. Overall, USAR was pleasant. It was a new group on the block and it was comparing against groups that were entire militaries as opposed to one branch. We focused on this one branch aspect because instead of trying to be everything, we were just going to be one and focus solely on that. Up until about 2017, there really wasn't any general issues. We went on a few raids against GUSM, which was GMF's USAM, USM, my bad, and Alamo's USM, who we also had a few raids with. We also have had several controversies during this time, as the community back then would somehow take it to Twitter, and at the time we were encouraged by our owner, Aston, to have our Twitter accounts, which we were required to have as Army HQ, to kind of enact a Twitter war against these other groups. Later down the line, after all, after several wars, which we won 19 and only lost one of them due to a technicality of one of the Ranger High Command using exploits and handing them out to personnel, we had no general issues and then a bunch of HQ, myself included, started having a suspicion about Aston, the owner at the time, having a more lingering secret because he would be talking from woman to woman in the group and they would kind of be bouncing up in ranks and we saw that as a problem because it would be he'd talk to a girl one week and then she'd immediately be shot up to HQ as an 09 and then she would disappear off the face of the earth and he'd repeat the same process. We later found out that these women were sadly being groomed by this individual, so we hatched a plan. We, along with some other people back at the time, one was known as 44 Shooter, came up with a plan to get him charged back on his PayPal because he had, at this point, also been scamming on Robux. But we dismissed it because we were looking at a lot bigger than potential money laundering because people's lives were being ruined over 10 and 15 bucks being stolen. As his time as our founder came to a close and we got everything prepared, the guy who got scammed out of 600 put in his report for PayPal. Aston, also known as American Operator, was banned and the first thing he resorts to is unfortunately posting an underage female's explicit photos and announcements which we promptly cleaned up got out of that me and a few others went to consult her to make sure she was doing okay telling her that she's all right that this will not happen that he will promptly be reported and according to our information, after he was banned, he was investigated by the British equivalency of the FBI for several crimes, not just including the heinous actions he did take, which was grooming. And after he was banned, there was several members who came forward, which greatly helped in us putting a case and putting that final nail in his coffin that he will not come back. After he got out, a guy named Cybervolts took over and misunderstood our intentions completely because we shared the family name. He was at this point in time known as Aston Redheart, the old owner before Cyber. And we were all in the Redheart family. So we were all promptly removed from our positions until we got in a chat and we explained, no, we kicked this guy out, he's bad. If you want to lead this group, that's good, as long as you don't do anything bad. Illegal. Because it's supposed to be fun. This is an enjoyable experience for everyone. With Cyber, it went really well. We saw the first iteration of Fort Martin before Xanance, and it went to Fort Jackson after that. 
but that was made from a handful of us, myself included, where we created a Fort Martin where it was terrible, I'm going to be real. But we were able to have combat in areas, every area was sectioned off via key cards as you see now, but in a very archaic manner. USAR at this point was steadily growing. We were about 200k members and it was thriving. We had raids going in and out. I eventually shot up to army staff once more, but this time under someone who was young, yes. But we saw his ambition as nothing problematic because he truly seemed to have wanted to go for the group. We later had an altercation involving him and my family after several build-ups which were small and menial on him creating his own little secretive units that would go on base and massacre everyone but that was eventually solved he proposed the idea he came to me and said why don't we open up delta forts i was against it because his last unit he opened up in this clandestine style was problematic and caused people to quit the game and we had a player count of a steady about 60 at the time and it would immediately drop down to 20 when these guys would go on base and just kill everyone i said no and we got into a little bit of a heated debate i said this is a mistake i will not stand by and support this one thing led to another it escalated to him leaking private information he leaked my snapchat at the time leaked my address and sent threats to my significant others work as well we did also experience a couple swattings because of it coming to this point we the hq members who were still founders that were still present in the group we came to a consensus and decided we're not going to stand for this we're going to get him out which led us to removing him from his position instead of getting him on PayPal because two reasons. One, he didn't use PayPal. He um, was a little smarter with his methods so we couldn't cut off his funds that way. And two, we are classy individuals as Leo liked to call ourselves, so we weren't gonna do the same trick twice. Instead, the my subordinate who was chief of staff of the army at the time made a big speech and retired, gave the reasonings on why he was retiring, which was the fact my personal information was leaked on something so petty and that should have not brought in to light from a Roblox argument. At this moment, we had several other HQ members use their ranks to promote people we had in place, including a bot, which Varen promoted over 50,000 people in the span of 10 minutes and to several ranks. We took control of the subgroups because it was all on a holder account and we gave everyone creator admin on basis to try and delay the repair as much as possible to let him know what he did wasn't okay. Now it is a rumor, I do not know fully on it, but there was talks because of what he did. Someone contacted his country's equivalency to the American IRS and it was found he was also laundering money like our other past leader before him, Aston. So it was also used to seize his funds and more evidence was put. He then went through with a deal to Xanance, which we um, intercepted Xanance, explained, hey, this is the guy you're dealing with. He has Take in arguments outside of Roblox, he will go and harm you personally if you cross him, this and that. We then formed a plan with Zan to put the final nail in the coffin and scam this guy who had done plenty wrong even before me and we didn't know. So Zan got a hold on the group and we then found out afterwards that Cyber was using some people he had within USAR to threaten these guys not to speak out and not to make action and they only felt safe enough when there was a new owner, new leadership. Zan came in about 2018, 2019 and immediately things started changing. We had a new map developed fast, which is the Fort Martin people now know. 
we started having more raids, I took control of ASOC again and dealt with the raid set of things. Personally, things have been looking up. Not without our flaws, we're all human. We have had a few characters, one notably known as Pararescue Alpha, who was sadly a founder of this group, who joined our little club on the hatred of pedophiles just to therein make sexually explicit comments and send sexually explicit photos to underage women. Not women, girls. These, these were girls who were groomed by this guy using his position of power in a group, which we found disgusting, promptly removed him, but also caused a rift in some of the original people. I had no doubt that this guy made those actions because I saw the evidence. However, because of the basis that we were founded upon was people like this do not belong in something that's made for fun, we had a rift and that is why I am currently the last standing founder in USAR because I was practically on my own on this side until all the evidence came forward. Mikey came forward and stated, yes, I did do this, which drifted everyone away from USAR. Today, USAR has definitely improved. Overall, while personally I feel we should have more raids, we have improved greatly. This group's tech is exponentially gotten better. Units are starting to get their combat of strive back in. We have had no major cases of anything of the sort. Zan, we are definitely better off with Zan as our leadership. Because despite everything that has happened in this group, we still have a leader that understands the bounds, doesn't cross those lines morally or ethically, because he understands it's not right. He's here to have fun as much as we are. What I hope to see moving on is, as I've stated previously, more raids. That is quite where my heart lies being in all the combative units I have been in. But there really isn't much more to strive for. Units are getting their tech, they're getting what they need. Training's going well. Everyone's really getting their step up and we're all moving forward. And I personally came forward to talk about all this because we have had our dark moments in USAR and without any further knowledge on it, people won't know how bad it's been to know how good we have it. I've been in this group for six years. I've seen it rise and fall. I've seen its bad moments, its good moments. I've taken USAR on over 2,190 raids myself, which is an unbelievable number. And it has definitely taken time. I personally enjoy having my fun here. And I'm glad people get to know where we come from to see the faults so we see how we can improve and not make those same mistakes.